go for. Hi gamers and welcome back to the Scottish Gaming Channel VR. My name is Scott and on today's video we're going to be checking out Shuttle Commander which is available on the Oculus Store. Our window on the universe. Welcome to the wonderful world of working in a vacuum. Shuttle Commander is currently $7.99 on the Oculus Store. Shuttle Commander is an accurate physical based flight simulator where you take the controls of the space shuttle and land it at various real world landing sites such as Kennedy Space Center. We are able to experience the launch of the Hubble Space Telescope from the cockpit of the Discovery and real-time launch experience using the original NASA cockpit audio and mission data. This is a, a really tremendous adventure that we've been on, a very challenging mission. Hubble isn't just a satellite. If you would like to see more videos like this, why not consider and subscribing to the channel? If you do, please remember to hit that notification bell and it'll let you know when my next upload is. Without further ado, let's jump into this space experience. Verify ready to resume count and go for launch. OTC. OTC is go. TBC. Bank and booster go. TTC. TTC is go. LPS. LPS is go. Mila. Mila is go. STM. STM is go. Safety console. Safety console is go. SPE. SP is go. LRD. LRD is go. SRO. SRO is go. You have a range clear to launch. And CDR. CDR is go. Heard those words, so uh, we'll get you. Going here shortly. Good luck, guys. Fantastic news. Thanks, Mike. Good luck. Godspeed. And have a little fun up there. You betcha. All systems are. Thanks, brother. Go for launch. Okay, clear caution and warning memory and verify no unexpected errors. Standing by now. Here's the retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent hood. Okay, we have no uh, caution and warning enunciation. Stand up okay. simply. Thanks, Charlie. Gimbling of the main engines is complete and the aero surfaces have been verified that they are positioned for launch. The external tank now is reported to be at flight pressure. OTC 212. Close and lock your visors and initiate your O2 flow and you all have a good trip. All right, everybody. Okay, everybody. Camps in. Visors down. Zero two on. Let's go for ETLA 2 pressurization. Give me a time checker on the horn. Yes, you are. Pressure on loud and clear. Stay loud and clear. 3, loud and clear. 90 seconds away from launch now. Got you all the way down there. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Are you going to take down that right shade or are you going to move there? The right shade. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. I'm really proud of every one of you. We've got to get there. <laughs> Sound suppression water system is now being armed, which will flow water onto the mobile launcher platform at the rate of 900,000 gallons a minute, beginning at T minus 16 seconds. The orbiter computers have positioned the vent doors to the launch configuration. Standing by now for a go for auto sequence start. T minus 33. Tap on clock will hold at T-31 seconds due to failure. We've had... Uh, so what? A hold. We do not know at this time what the problem is. We'll be standing by for a word, but the clock is holding at T-31 right. seconds due to, to, stand by. to a system failure. NTD is the MPL. Go ahead. It's uh, LCC MTS-8. And uh, PV-9 outboard zone drain, closed power, 
is off, it should be on. No recommendation. And uh, NTD, that we're in a no-go situation, we should have uh, our open power and we do not. Or excuse me, our, our closed power. SP. And uh, MTS, can we verify that the valve is closed? Negative. We are right now show a open position. We cannot verify the valve is closed. Let's do this with MTS. Go ahead, MTS. Okay, we're going to see reads out. We have the closed power on and the open position off. We can cycle one time and try to pick up the closed position, but uh, we never picked up the closed power. Go ahead, MTS. Okay, we're going to see reads out. We have the closed power on and the open we were blocked by a prerequisite sequence from GCL-18. What has happened is the ground launch sequencer would not hand off to the orbiter's computers to complete the count because the liquid oxygen fill and drain valve was showing off when it should be on. Uh, we've been holding two minutes. SB, this is uh, CMPS. We're going to make an attempt to push that valve closed. So we've got the pre set off. If this works, we should be in good shape. I copy. Proceed. It yeah, works. Just check with. We have seven minutes of runtime available on the auxiliary power units. We've been holding now about two minutes and 20 seconds. And to you, CMPS, uh, the valve's closed. We're good. Here's the confirmation that we have successfully okay, and, uh, you're in the recycled. You're in the pickup terminal sequence, MPS. Uh, that's a phone, it's a little bit. Okay, you have a go to proceed. Uh, DLS, pick up the count immediately. I copy. Mark. It showed that. It is. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, we're on the scope on a sequence start. We are go for start. All right, everybody, 25. Booster hydraulic power unit has started. Start with a Sound suppression water system has started. Two minus 13 seconds. Two minus 10, go for main engine start. We are go for main engine start. Two minus 10. There we go. Distance of 35 nautical miles. Hey, you may 
open your visors, sue it too often, open your visors if you want. This drops all to report right. all three right, engines stable at 104% performance. Discovery Houston, performance is nominal. <sighs> Discovery two engine Bangor Air. Nearly all right, can we help you? The two engine okay. Bangor Air right. call means that uh, Discovery could reach the transatlantic abort site at Bangor Air on two engines if it were necessary. Copy nominal performance, two engine Ben. I don't remember liftoff being quite that violent. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Velocity now 5,000 feet per second. Discovery 60 nautical miles away from the launch site. Good okay. How's everybody doing on the mid deck? Doing fine down here. Okay. All systems continuing to perform well aboard Discovery. Velocity now is 6,200 feet per second. Downrange 100 nautical miles. The uh, environmental systems officer reports the FES is operating well. That is the flash evaporator system that provides cooling to Discovery systems. Discovery Houston, negative return, press to ATO, select Banjul. Press to ATO, negative return. DTDT is trending to zero. Copy. It's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. 1.7 G's. Check it with my head. <laughs> it's at zero. That's good. Great news. Zero. <laughs> All three engines are stable at 104%. Auxiliary power units all performing well. Discovery's velocity is 8,400 feet per second at a downrange distance of 175 nautical miles. 3, press to Miko. Press to Miko. The press to Miko call signifies that Discovery could make the main engine cutoff target. Discovery, Droop Banjo 109. Droop 109. And that last call means that uh, Discovery could reach the Banjo transatlantic site on one engine at 109%. Hopefully this thing won't come off. Guidance officer confirms that navigation is good. Discovery, single engine banjo 104. Single engine manual, 104. DPDG look good there. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, zero. zero. Engines are good. Okay. Mark on a two. Holy cow, we're smoking. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could see that. Booster officer reports, so uh, all three engines stable. Houston, single engine press, 104. Single engine press, 104. How many switches you think you'd be throwing now? <laughs> I know. Coming up on throttling. I agree. The single engine press call means that uh, Discovery could make it to main engine cutoff targets on one engine at 104%. Discovery's velocity now 16,000 feet per second, at an altitude of 58 nautical miles, downrange 435 nautical miles. Yes, uh, DH, we expect it. Uh, 
Gilbert Houston, concur. No action on fuel cell pH. No action is required. No impact on that uh, pH message. That uh, message was expected during this phase of the launch. Three Gs. Air throttling. Minute to go. We got it. All right. Are you all ready? Yeah. Three engines throttling back now to maintain the 3G limits on the uh, vehicle. Discovery is 580 miles away from Kennedy at an altitude of 56 nautical miles. Yeah, this helmet's heavy. Yeah. Velocity now 19,000 uh, feet per second. You know, with this DSO and these uh, the clicks in the G, so you sort of get squeezed uh, every which way you can. Okay, just go easy, guys. We are standing by for main engine cutoff at uh, 8 minutes 32 seconds, mission elapsed time. 10 seconds, Mach 25. Okay, stand by for some XL here, just build it. Stand by. How'd you go? There you go. Big go. That was a big go. That was a big go. I agree. It's a lot easier than 3G. Oh, much better. Welcome to space, everyone. Hard to believe, isn't it? There it is. Yeah. Hey, bud. It's nice up here. At 300,000 feet. <laughs> That's a killer view. Boy, look at that. What an amazing vehicle. Amazing. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. I can't believe it. And the booster officer also confirms a, a nominal main engine cutoff. airlock has several possible configurations depending on what the shuttle's mission is. The airlock itself can be placed either inside or outside the mid-deck and can also be attached to a tunnel adapter to allow for docking with space stations or connection to space modules. The advanced crew escape suit is worn by astronauts during launch and landing. It is a full pressure suit connected directly to the shuttle's air supply. The helmet is both a clear visor and black sunshade to reduce glare during launch and landing. Its backpack contains a full survival kit to help the astronauts if they become stranded after landing. This includes a life raft and flares. Sleeping in space is a relatively simple affair. Astronauts simply zip themselves up in their bags and fall asleep. Commander Chris Hadfield said of sleep in space, Without gravity, of course, you don't need anything to hold you up. You just completely relax. You don't even need a pillow. In space, you don't even need to hold your head up, so you can just relax every muscle in your body. The lockers on the mid-deck are designed to be entirely modular and were typically used for storing both personal and mission-critical effects. Examples of these include food, spare CO2 scrubbers, as well as experiments, commemorative coins, action figures, photographs, cameras, and survival equipment. Behind the lockers themselves is much of the avionics package, the computer that helps the shuttle fly. The galley is used for food preparation and contains cleaning materials, an oven, and hot and cold water dispensers. Shuttle astronauts are supplied with a wide variety of food each mission including barbecue beef, shortbread cookies, turkey tetrazzini, and granola bars. The hatch is the main entry and exit point for astronauts and crew once the airlock has been installed before mission. The flight deck also contains emergency escape panels in the roof in the event that the hatch becomes stuck.
The shuttle is controlled via a fly-by-wire system, meaning the pilot's controls aren't mechanically moving the control surfaces. Instead, computers aid in translating the pilot's movement of the joysticks, levers, and pedals into electronic signals to move motors that adjust the rudders, flaps, and elevons. With a few notable exceptions, the shuttle's landing was almost entirely computer-controlled, with the exception of the last few minutes before touchdown, where the pilot took full manual control. The mission station has screens and controls for monitoring the overall mission, as well as payload-specific data. The readouts shown here help the crew to monitor the shuttle's subsystems throughout the mission. The station on the left is used to control the orbiter during rendezvous and docking. The pilot uses the reaction control system to fire small bursts of the reaction engines to control the shuttle's direction and movement while in orbit. The station on the right is for payload manipulation, and the controls for the Canadarm are found here. The payload station contains controls for the payload's electronics, as well as mission-specific control interfaces. This panel would often be swapped out for each mission, depending on the shuttle's payload. The waste collection system acts as the toilet aboard the space shuttle. It uses a sophisticated suction system as well as seat belts to ensure the astronauts are able to complete their ablutions in peace. Waste is stored in a tank under the floor, while liquids are periodically ejected into space. The hatch is the main entry and exit point for astronauts and crew once the airlock has been installed before mission. The flight deck also contains emergency escape panels in the roof in the event that the hatch becomes stuck. A total of six shuttles were built, including the test vehicle Enterprise. The remaining shuttles, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavor, are located in the Smithsonian, the Kennedy Space Center, and California Science Center, respectively. Enterprise is located at the Intrepid Museum in New York. The shuttle's main engines are a cluster of three Rocketdyne RS-25 engines, fueled via the external tank during takeoff. These engines combine hydrogen and oxygen to create an explosive force, producing over five meganewtons of thrust. Combined with the solid rocket boosters at ignition, these engines help get the shuttle up to orbital speed. The orbital maneuvering system uses bipropellant fuel to adjust the shuttle's orbit once it reaches space. This fuel uses two chemicals that, when mixed, ignite simultaneously and produce thrust. This same fuel combination is used for the reaction control system, which controls the shuttle's orientation, as well as providing fine maneuvering control for docking. The airlock has several possible configurations depending on what the shuttle's mission is. The airlock itself can be placed either inside or outside the mid-deck and can also be attached to a tunnel adapter to allow for docking with space stations or connection to space modules. The space shuttle was primarily a method of delivering payloads to orbit. Aside from the famous examples like Hubble and Space Lab, the shuttle also delivered the Galileo probe and Chandra X-ray observatory, as well as 80% of the mass of the International Space Station into orbit. After the shuttle has slowed down below the speed of sound, the pilot takes manual control for landing. The large delta wings help to provide lift, and the elevons and body flap at the rear help to control pitch and roll. The large rudder is used for both yaw control as well as opening in both directions at once to produce drag and act as an air brake. 